All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have made a handful of moves, most recently signing Baker Mayfield to a one-year, $8.5 million contract. Levante David re-signed, Jamel Dean re-signed. Both of those were pretty surprising to me. Shaq Mason was traded away. That one was not very surprising. And our most recent report is that the Buccaneers are interested in Ezekiel Elliott. So... It's been an interesting last 48 hours, but it's been an even more interesting last 24 hours, specifically with the Baker Bridge. So if you guys have been watching this channel for a while, you know my thoughts on Kyle Trask. I absolutely loved him coming out of Florida. I loved him being behind Tom Brady. I thought it was perfect, and I thought he just needed a chance. But that is my bias. Like, that is my Kyle Trask bias, and that is my Tampa Bay Buccaneers bias. Baker Mayfield, I think, is the perfect bridge quarterback. If we go back and we look at Tom Brady when he left New England and came on over to Tampa Bay, New England went with Cam Newton. And Cam Newton, even at that point in his career where he was past his prime, a little injury prone, he... I mean, look at New England right now. They're not suffering. They're not struggling. They didn't go through some desperate rebuild. He was a pretty perfect bridge starter for that team. Before we get any further into tonight's video, if you guys enjoy, be sure to hit that like button, hit that sub button if you enjoy it. Now, who knows what's going to happen? You know, take a look at Baker Mayfield last season. So he finished it off with the Los Angeles Rams, but he began it with Carolina as their starter. Carolina, through six games of him starting, was one in five. He had six touchdowns, six interceptions, a career low in completion percentage at 57.8. But I do want to mention... Carolina at that time was a turmoil. You know, they just fired their head coach. They just traded away CMC. Like, that team was on the brink of disaster. And I don't think Baker Mayfield was the sole reason for that. I mean, even look at DJ Moore, who was there. It was kind of his only weapon on offense. If you bring him to Tampa, where you have Mike Evans, you have Chris Godwin, who, who knows who's who they're going to draft, honestly. Maybe they get Zeke. Whatever happens, happens. But he has enough weapons in Chris Godwin and Mike Evans on this team where it's just not going to be a similar situation to Carolina. But let's say for argument purposes, he has a similar start to Tampa like he did in Carolina, and Tampa Bay through six games is one and five. So what do you do from there? Well, we'll wait and see if Tampa Bay drafts a quarterback. I don't think they're going to trade up and take somebody like, you know, maybe Will Levis. I think the first four picks in this year's draft are going to be quarterbacks, and I think it's a hard bargain to pay for. I don't think it's in the Buccaneers' best interest. I want to get younger. I want to get more athletic on both sides of the ball. This offensive line needs redone. The defense, we need to find suitable replacements. There are a lot of holes on this team, and... I don't think a quarterback at 18 is in their best interest in the slightest, but maybe they take a guy like Hendon Hooker in the third or fourth round and let him and Kyle Trask battle it out for backup quarterback. Well, regardless, most likely, let's just use our current roster for argument's sake. Let's say that one in five, Baker Mayfield is not working with Tampa Bay in the slightest. So what do you do from there? Well, now Kyle Trask finally gets his shot. Now Kyle finally gets his moment. But to be honest with you, the way Baker ended the season in LA, where he pretty much flew in, played a football game, and it was just like that. Like he had no time to prepare. Or there was nothing like that. One in three in his brief tenure with the Rams, he threw four touchdowns, two interceptions. He had actually almost a career high 63.6% completion percentage. He had four touchdowns, two interceptions, and 850 total yards. If we get that Baker Mayfield in the NFC South, I know that the Panthers are making a bunch of moves, but that's the issue with rookie quarterbacks is, you know, even though Carolina has the number one pick, it still becomes... What are they going to do with that number one pick? How is that number one pick going to produce? What's it going to look like, et cetera, et cetera. I know Derek Carr went to the Saints. The Saints have been pretty active in free agency as well. But regardless, none of these teams at this point in time are anything to write home about. Tampa Bay still has enough championship pieces. They still have enough veteran championship depth on their roster to make a playoff run. You know, I'm not a fan of rebuilds. I'm not a fan of any of that. I get it. The Baker Bridge might not be in a lot of fans' 
that might not be what they want. That's not their first option. But to me, I'm trying to make do with what happened because the past is the past. It already happened and it, we just kind of have to deal with it now. I don't hate it. I don't love it. I'm pretty indifferent. We'll wait and see what happens. Baker, a couple of years ago or a handful of seasons ago, five years ago in 2018 was the first pick in the draft for a reason. He had a good first three years in his time with Cleveland, 27 touchdowns. 14 picks in his rookie year, 22 touchdowns, a horrible 21 interceptions in his sophomore campaign. But he bounced back beautifully with Cleveland in his third year, led them to 11 and 5, had 26 touchdowns and eight interceptions. So, with a 28 year old former first round draft pick, first pick in the draft, sorry, you just never know what could happen, right? You just never know what could happen. So, I'm hopefully optimistic i am you know trying to keep things level i'm trying to be realistic about it but i'm remaining optimistic because who knows what's going to happen with baker mayfield on this team all right levante david and jamel dean are both coming back levante one year seven million dollar contract this was a complete shocker i was absolutely shocked that this happened jamel dean coming back was also extremely shocking this could mean a couple of different things they want to you know levante more so wants to stay with tampa bay for his entire career he's still got gas in the tank and he wants to win and he believes tampa bay is still a place where you can win i love it I welcome back Levante. I definitely welcome back Jamel. And we'll wait and see what, you know, free agency technically started today. The tampering window began a couple of days ago, but this isn't the only moves that Tampa's going to make. They had to make money situations work. Like they were not in a good place and still aren't in a good place salary cap wise. And that's why you see the Shaq Mason trade. The Buccaneers received the 2023 sixth round pick, which is 179 from Houston this season. Texans received guard Mason, guard Shaq Mason and our 2023 seventh round pick at 230. So you look at that deal just kind of on a face value and you're like, what on earth is Tampa Bay doing there? That was purely a money move. That was purely a logistical move to just like ease the burden of all the bad cap room going on right now. Lastly, the Ezekiel Elliott situation is interesting. Leo obviously is a goner. He's not going to be with Tampa Bay next season. I'm very optimistic about Rashad White. Uh, we saw plenty of flashes from him this past year, more so towards the end of the year. I like his ability to run the ball. I like his ability to catch the ball. This is also an extremely deep playoff class. But regardless, if it's going to be Zeke, they're probably going to target a veteran running back because it's going to ease the burden off whoever your QB is or starting QB rather, whether it's Baker, whether it's Trask or a rookie quarterback or whatever, however that situation ends. I've made mock drafts where I take Bajan Robinson with pick number 18. Bottom line is he is, or sorry, not pick number 18, but the bottom line is Bajan's not going to be available by then. He's climbing up these draft boards, and uh, Robinson certainly will not be available by our first-round pick. So it is what it is. Maybe they trade up to acquire Bajan, and the only reason I'm bringing this up is because I genuinely believe he is a Hall of Fame talent. I think he is clear-cut the best bet at having the most successful NFL career out of everybody, every offensive player, and honestly, every defensive player that's in the draft. So... At number 19, you'll still read some mock drafts where the the Buccaneers will be able to take Bajan, but I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, we're six weeks away from the draft, I wouldn't be surprised if he just climbs up these rankings. That's it for tonight. A lot to, a lot to handle, so let me know what you guys are thinking down below. I don't think this is the worst offseason. I was kind of expecting a complete dumpster fire. This is not as bad as I was anticipating was going to happen, and I'm honestly starting to get a little bit excited. It is the Buccaneers, but... You know, I, I'm starting to get a little excited. So hit that like button, hit that sub button for daily Buccaneers content. Let me know what you guys are thinking about this offseason thus far, and I'll catch you guys later.